All right, casual video here today. One of the things I absolutely love is short horror books. So novellas, novellettes, whatever you want to call them, under 200 pages, like it is the perfect length for a horror book. Set up a creepy premise. Don't over your stay or what you're welcome and just entertain me the entire time through. I love it. So looking back through Goodreads, I was seeing if there was any short horror books I haven't really talked about and I came across the note day. And this was actually one of my favorites for the longest time. I listened to it on Audible. It's I want to say if it was like two hours, I'd be shocked. And you're watching that countdown go down and the anxiety is building. But one of the things I've got to mention is it's narrated by one of the, my favorite people here on BookTube. And that's going to be Murphy Nepier. Like I didn't realize this when I bought the book from Audible. It was before I even really used YouTube. I think I was following one BookTuber at the time for my recommendations. And I got this one just from a random list. And... Yeah, no, she does an amazing job as the narrator for it, and I highly recommend. You have this woman and her boyfriend, from what I remember, it has been a couple of years, and they are spending the day together. There's an incident. I can really don't want to tell you anything, except they're stranded and they're trying to escape. And the book is so short. As you're watching, like, the timer tick down, it's not like, okay, we're going to make an attempt and we might fail and we'll try again. You feel the anxiety as like they only get the one shot to escape and I really love and highly recommend this book entirely especially the audiobook. I already talked about this one in a previous video link somewhere but um The Hellbound Heart by Clive Barker. I cannot put into words how much I love this story. It is gorgeous is the only way to describe it. Like I fell in love with this writing style. I was so immersed. It was absolutely beautiful as it's extremely over sexual and so descriptively gory violence, bloody body horror. I, but it's so good. And it's, I can't describe it as anything other than beautiful. I cannot tell you how much I love this writing. Yes, I'm being repetitive, but my God, it's that good. Um, if you've seen the movie uh, Hellraiser, it, follows the movie follows the book extremely closely yet the book is somehow so much better and I am not someone who normally says the book is better I normally like voice acting and the special effects and soundtracks to add to the experience oh not in this case because you cannot get across the emotions that you feel with the descriptive writing of this story everything was just better in the novel form loved it um you have uh, father, daughter who are in a new house. You have the uh, the wife, there's an affair, there's pinhead, there's torture. It is it is such a good story and I recommend it. All right, going into books I actually know the plot of, we need to do something. I cannot tell you how much I love this book. Like it is a contender for one of, A, my favorite book of the year and possibly a favorite book of all time or at least in the top 10. Oh my God, it was so good. You have this dysfunctional family who are all dysfunctional in their own way that have the most rich character development in such a short period of time. Like, I feel like I know these people. And they are trapped in a bathroom together. There's a tornado warning outside, so they've all taken shelter in the bathroom, expecting to only be there for a night. When they become trapped for days, possibly weeks, they don't know how much time is passing. They're starving. They thankfully have fresh water, but that's all they got. Um, and then you think that maybe the world outside has ended as no one is coming to save them. And you get these little glimpses of the outside world as 99% of it all takes place in this bathroom. And you think maybe the world literally might have ended and it might be post-apocalyptic outside, but you don't know for sure, really. And then you follow pretty much in the main character's head of the uh, daughter as she thinks she is responsible and dealing with all the fallout with her parents and how they're trying to survive. The writing is gorgeous. The character design, the character work is fantastic. And then the t story just gets bleak. It's like being stuck in purgatory is the only way I can describe the story. I love it. I highly recommend it. Please read this book. So good. Um, side note, I did call my parents at one point in time and was just like, hey, don't ask questions, but if I was trapped in a bathroom, do you think I could beat my way out? Like, could I either punch my way out through a wall or use the lid of the toilet seat to break my way out? Uh, my dad says yes. My mom said uh, the ceramic of the toilet seat would probably crack or the toilet lid would crack, but I could still get out. 
My cousin, however, thinks that her bathroom is all full of tiles, so probably not. But then I'm like, well, why about the door itself? And she's like, oh yeah, you could beat through that. So premise of getting trapped in the bathroom and being unable to escape doesn't really work considering I'm pretty sure they could have went out through a wall. They bring it up in the story, like, hey, why don't we punch through the wall? And they're like, no, we can't punch through the wall. I don't know why no one tried. Next we have Hole, and I adored this one as well so very much. A couple mixed reviews online. So you have husband and wife, wife has since passed, and uh, during a car accident. So the husband survived the car accident, but he is very much injured. He's in pain, paralyzed, completely at the mercy of his care of the caretaker, the mother-in-law. Uh, this was compared to Stephen King's Misery. I can understand the comparison, but while that focuses on like toxic fandom, uh, this one, not so much. So he is completely helpless. And I was tempted not even to call this horror because... Really, it's literary fiction-ish, but the loss of identity, losing one's life, the lack of control, the vulnerability this man felt, 100%, this is horror. And I loved every second of it. The mixed reviews mostly comes from um, disability representation as they felt like you're wallowing in this. You kind of, she's, He's hating himself, what he's become, the way characters are described in some moments. And while I get the criticism, like he went from being a university professor kind of thing and very up and up and then all his life ahead of him, good marriage and all that. Uh, only for everything to be taken away from him and be confined to bed and financially abused, mentally abused. He's, a, he's allowed to be upset about this. Uh, and the need for human contact, the humiliation this man faces. And he's unable to communicate. So even when people come to visit him, he can't say what's being done to him and what he needs and what he wants. Oh, it is, it is terrifying. It is frustrating. Apparently financial abuse is a trigger of mine I didn't know about. And I love this story. The characters were really well done. And the uh, title, when translated into its original language of uh, Korean, means like alone, but also could mean uh, widower, which works very well. But honestly, so the mother-in-law is digging holes in the backyard. And I will never forget that hole and how it gets bigger. I wish it played a little bit more of the story, but it, it is very memorable at the same time, especially if you read a physical copy compared to the audiobook. I thankfully went back and forth between two. And finally, we have Below. Uh, I picked this one up mostly because um, Mothman is one of my favorite, like, supernaturally figures. Was it cryptozoology, whatever it's called? Uh, and this was obviously mildly inspired by that creature and I really wanted to read it. Woman is driving through isolated area, creepy things happen and figure overhead. Technology is down, can't get a cell phone out. She's got this CB radio with a truck driver and an event happens and she has to put her life on the line to save a stranger. And this story had all like my buzzwords starting off. We have lone heroine putting life online to protect someone, isolated horror, and a creature feature. I love, I love all of that. And it started off so good. Like I was hooked from the beginning. It was everything I loved. Um, but then, so I don't want to go into spoilers because again, it's such a short story. I don't want to give away too much of the plot, but... I got very lost in terms of where we were geographically. It took place in such a small area. It should have been very straightforward of this is where I'm located. If I head this way, I'd run into this. If I head that way, I'd run into that. Um, I never knew where she was at all. So she's saying, I'm climbing, I'm running. I'm like, where are you climbing to? Where are you running to? How do you get out? I don't know which way you have to go to get out. This felt like a fever dream to me at a lot of times, and I did not like that. Um, and then character work could have been done better, but it wasn't bad. But then we really went into like a more very heavy feminist kind of message of not being heard or uh, believed or even uh, allow your thoughts to be your own. Someone's always impacting you, telling you what to do and how to think. 
which starting off in the story was fine. It was su it wasn't that subtle, but it was there. It was good. It was well handled. It had a good combination place in the story and its themes. It was fine. But when that message began to take over the entire plot, I'm like, I, it made me realize the elements I didn't like because I was confused. I'm like, you put so much focus in those themes that we neglect it describing the geography and me figuring out what the hell's going on. And then with such a short story, with the ending left more or less open end to your own interpretation, I'm like, mm, this was unsatisfactory, in my opinion. The writing was still good. There were there were cringy dialogue moments, though, that I'm remembering. But there was just as many very well written moments and good dialogue like they balanced each other out pretty well i enjoyed the basic setup of the plot i enjoyed what was happening i i just need a little bit more i don't know if it's in the ending stage or if this was meant to be a fever dream not sure not to my taste still good would recommend especially because short horror you're not is not taking up much of your day but not to my personal taste all right, so those are the books that I have read recently and two books that I read uh, quite a while ago, but still recommends for short horror. All right, I will talk to you later.